Matt Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. To say something about baptism is to say something about who Christ is and who you and I are invited to be. This is the celebration of the baptism of our Lord. This is the manifestation, the revelation of Jesus' very identity right after the nativity. This is an inauguration as well as his, uh, of his public ministry. The baptism of Jesus by John in the Jordan River helps us to identify Jesus, and that voice from heaven doesn't hurt. This is my son with whom I am well pleased. It is an opportunity for those who read and listen to the text to hear that Jesus has come from God, is of God, and has a particular mission and ministry with us. In this passage, we may see Jesus in a lot of metaphorical ways as servant, as an inaugurator of a new exodus, the maker or remaker of creation, and the one who fulfills all righteousness. These are the words of Scripture. These are the words the prophets have told us to expect in this person of Jesus. And God's heavenly voice puts an exclamation point on the message. By this we all mean that Jesus is the only perfect image of God and shows us God's pure nature, a nature which is love. God is love. And so it's not hard for us to imagine from this point on as we follow the story of Jesus for the rest of the year, we're going to see acts of love as he makes his way to the cross. Sure, we'll think of the healing and the feeding events of Jesus, but it is this particular moment in the gospel where God's own act, God's divine Son, received our human nature from Mary, His mother, and is fully human. After first freeing Israel, God sends God's Son to free us through a divine act of incarnation. So that in and through Jesus' life and death upon the cross, we, you and I, might become adopted as children of God and be made heirs of God's kingdom. This is great news for us because so far we've been unable to do that on our own, (laughs) right? In this way, we might think too of uh, uh, the John of Nazianzus. That's a, he's an old, old, old wise saint of the church who said, Jesus who climbs out of the water is a new Adam And like the creation narrative itself, he rises out of the waters of chaos. I think reorienting our lives in the midst of our chaos that swarms all around us. Here is Christ in Christ's baptism for us, a signpost to look towards. Consider this. Now, You know, I've got to throw in a little mystical, spiritual language for those of you who are more that type of person. So let me offer you another image. For through the presence of God, says Maximus the Confessor, we are called God's children of God. John 1, 12, by the way. The body and members of God, Ephesians 1, 23, 5, and 30. Even a portion of God you and I are. And God's purpose, this is the end toward which our lives are directed. For this end man was brought into the world. Baptism is an outward sign of something that humans and followers of Jesus have been putting words around to try and help us understand for centuries. It is an outward sign of something that took place over 2,000 years ago. As Paul says, while you and I as sinners were yet far off, God began this great act for all of our sins and for our lives. 
even before we could even ask or imagine. And this is why we don't, we don't bother about children's baptism. Everything's already been shaped or reshaped by Jesus in the world. So let us bring all to God through these waters of baptism. We share in a victory with Jesus as he rises out of the water. So then do Alicia and Anderson and all of those who've been baptized to remind us each that we're already saved by God. We don't even have to go back there. God's already saved these two folks. This is simply an outward sign, so we cannot deny it of them. It's already taken place inside. Holy baptism, thus, is a sacrament by which we are adopted. We are become living members of Christ's body uh, and this mission-minded church, and nobody can change that. No matter what they say, Christ has knit us together in one community. And nobody can take that away from us. We are God and Christ Jesus forever, we proclaim. This is our reorientation of life, our new, our new natal home, our nativity. We'll give a, a Christ candle to both Elisha and Anderson today as to remind them of the light that already is burning inside of them. The Christ who is born in a manger and is baptized creates a rippling effect then in baptism so that we may locate our very beginning in the midst of Christ's pilgrimage. Here we discover our unity in the tomb-like waters, and by this rebirth we are committed to a different kind of life one that is befitting the Christ, one that is befitting the Christ. The Scripture tells us this, a life of giving thanks for our deliverance from death and worship and the praise of God's name. This is key. <laughs> Coming back here every Sunday and during the week to remember to give thanks to God for the deliverance we've already received. And that no matter how bad it is out there, we know God is with us. So to give thanks and praise God's name. And second is this, a life of giving away gifts, to give to the mission of the church, to give to the poor, to give and make a difference by our giving. And finally, a life of action, a life of doing good and making change. Just like you all do in Kenya and Belize, but also through the feeding programs here at All Saints. These are the ways in which we give and say thank you to God by serving those who are God's friends, the least, the lost, and the lonely, the hungry, those who despair. This is how we, like John, pour water of grace on Christ's head. Remember that passage from Matthew, right? When did we do this? You did this when you visited me in prison. Chapter 25, you did this when you fed me and I was hungry. This is the way we act by reorienting our lives. We, we don't get it right all the time. Let's face it. I certainly don't. I, maybe you're purer of heart than I am. But I mess this up routinely. You know, I'll be doing pretty good for a couple of days, maybe a minute or so, and then it'll just go right out the window and I'll say something or do something. And you know what? That is naturally human. <laughs> Thank God I'm not alone. Father Chris is right there with me. There's two of us, <laughs> right? But the reality is for Episcopalians, we say... From the very outset, it's not that we believe somehow we will fulfill all righteousness. No, Jesus fulfills all righteousness. We heard that in the Scripture. What we do as Episcopalians when we sin is promise we commit, as you will today, to return to the Lord. That's all. I mean, how hard is that? It's like the, it's like the Father waiting for us right there at the end of the road. It does not matter when you come back. The Father is always grateful you arrived. 
We are given constantly, every hour, an opportunity to reorient our lives to Jesus and Jesus' baptism, no matter what broken road, as the song goes, has separated us in the meantime. So today, we all begin again, thanks to Anderson and Alicia. We get an opportunity to start fresh, to proclaim who God is, to reaffirm our own baptismal covenant, our own vows, and to say we're going to start fresh today. So I imagine it's probably about time we begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter at Texas Bishop and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.